Hey, Calvary Assembly of God, Pastor Dan, Pastor Dante coming at you to continue our multi-ethnic conversations. I, I, you know, the more time I spend with Pastor Dante, the more I appreciate him as my brother in Christ and a co-laborer, bro. Yes, the sir. harvest is love ripe. It. Love it. I love it. Uh, love and it. And Lord, I, I mean, much love to you. Uh, thanks for continuing to sit down and uh, just continue to chat about real life issues uh, that affect not only our nation, um, but the church and families and households and different ethnicities, some more than others. Um, look, friends, I'll just tell you, um, Pastor Dante and I, we just finished a time of prayer and it's our desire to lean into the presence of God, lean into God's word, his values, uh, to be faithful uh, to the Lord in everything we do. You know, our spiritual act of worship is more than a song that we sing on Sunday mornings. Yes, it is. I would say that yes, it is. giving of our time today, Pastor Dante, I would say you are worshiping the Lord today Yes. in terms of leaning into a conversation, giving your time, uh, helping, helping me mm -hmm. understand what I don't know. And, uh, and I know from our conversations, it's even mutual. We just, yes. look, we, we only know what we know, friends. Yes. And uh, that's so true. if we think we know it that's all, so that's true. a spirit of pride. Yes. There's only one thing worse than arrogance. I, I think it's ignorant arrogance. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> right. So, Pastor Dante, thanks for, for joining us again here at Calvary Assembly. And my pleasure. How you doing, man? My pleasure. I'm great. I want to say a shout out because last time I didn't shout my Calvary family out in the beginning. And it took me too long. So, I'm going to shout you out today. Love you again. Uh, my extended family, uh, my heart, you guys have a place in my heart that will forever be settled there. Um, love you. Um, shout out to, again, my mentor and my good friend, David Welly. Um, he's not here with us, but I wanted to make sure I shout him out today. I'm doing great, by the way. Good. Um, the Lord is wonderful. He's blessing me. Come on. Um, having these extended conversations about race and um, about race in America and in the church are... Um, sometimes exhausting but necessary because they're coming back up and they for a, a good reason and so i am uh, got my hand to the plow yes, you do. and not looking back um, yeah. at all and asking God to give me the grace to consistently be faithful with the wisdom and the voice that he has given me for um, this prophetic season and time that we have in our country and in the church so yeah amen you know and you use the word prophetic Pastor Dante, and, and I would even say by the very fact that we sit here, it's almost prophetic. I think there's a message that God is sending to the church by the yeah. fact that we yes. sit here together yes, sir. with a spirit of not just faith, yeah. but a spirit of love. Yes, sir. And uh, I really believe that the Lord has, has called you to help bridge some of the gaps that have existed, even within the Christian sphere, even within the realm of Christianity and church life. Uh, you know, there's just certain levels of comfort that keep yeah, buddy. keep us isolated. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm not content with that. And I know that Me you're neither. not content with that. Me neither. Um, you know, I've heard your story before. The Lord's brought you. Um, he's brought you a long way through your own story, your own journey. And maybe we'll talk more about that sometime. But, but here's, here's the one thing. Pastor Dante and I have talked an awful lot about. And... Uh, and prayed about, you know, in order for us, church, and we're not going to be too long today, by the way, we're going to continue this conversation in some, some bite-sized pieces, maybe we'll be about 10 minutes, we'll see today, but we really want to just encourage you to do what we're doing, yeah. right, what yeah. we're modeling, Yes. Uh, you use the word prophetic, I believe yeah. the Lord's called us to even model what he would say should happen in the church, Yes. yes and, and uh, you know, we claim to love all the time, but it's easy to love when you don't have a relationship. It's easy to say you love when you're yeah. at, you know, you're at distance and you don't, you, you don't have conversations. Yeah. Um, yes. Now I think there's something to be said about the need for conversations. That you want to add to that? Indeed. Yeah. Um, I just think that particularly with this particular issue that we keep bringing up, and by the way, um, I want to applaud you for keeping this before us, um, to have the courage um, to keep this before us, to keep this conversation before us, and I say us because you are allowing your influence to draw me in and others in who you are leading to continue this conversation because it's necessary. So I wanna applaud you first for keeping this before us. Um, yeah, I just think that um, particularly with this particular issue that everybody has, it's either everybody has something to say 
or everybody is super silent. That's true. There is nobody in between. And we talked about leaning in and listening um, and that without listening, these conversations get hijacked by all other um, influences that shouldn't be there because we should be, be, we should be willing to listen and help one another grow and learn. Yeah, you know, so let me just make sure we caught what Pastor Dante said. There tends to either be too much talking on the subject or not enough. And, and, and I will say, I, I, I'll speak for myself and, and maybe a few others that I've spoken uh, with who are like me, you know, white folks who, who want to promote peace, want unity, want a spirit of love to exist, especially in the church, I think in times past for myself, I have felt like if, if I can just, I don't want to say the wrong thing, so if I right. can just sort of, uh, you know, be, you know, love is patient, love is kind, right? You know, First yeah. Corinthians 13 is some of those descriptions. If I can be kind, if I can just, you know, be and not be, host, yeah. you know, uh, not bring hostility into the equation, yeah. then that's good. Well, it might right. be better than what could be worse, but it may not be necessarily helpful. Right. In other words, um, be, be just being quiet. Maybe that's a maybe that is a huge growth step for, for some of us. Maybe just learning to kind of, okay, I'm going to keep peace. Maybe that's good. But I, I really believe the Lord will want us to lean into conversation. And conversation is not just doing all the talking like, hey, this should change, that should change, what's wrong with this, that, and the other, and them. And But true conversation is more than one way. It's the ability to listen. Definitely. Right? To, to truly listen. And um, I, think, I think sometimes humanity and Americans and people in general have a hard time listening. Yeah. Um, but Pastor Dante and I, we really want to encourage you as the people of God. Look, these conversations, they're necessary. Um, if, if they're done right, Absolutely. spirit of humility, spirit yes. of faith, spirit of love. Yes. I mean, if not in the church, then where? Yes. Yeah, I think, and I think you, 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 you express it well um, because the, the courage that we don't have is usually because we're not listening. And usually talking is a defense mechanism against what we don't want to hear. And so we try to out-talk each other because we don't want to hear each other because we want you to hear me because if hearing, if I have to hear you, then I may have to hear something that I do not want to hear. And okay. so it's, yeah. it's, I think it's unique. And it's, it's this one brings up, in, in this particular subject matter that we talk about or we've been talking about, brings that up to the forefront even more. That there's hard things that... Um, people like you may not want to hear there may be even hard things that people like me may not want to hear sure um that some white brothers i told you before in our previous conversation have shared some things with me intimately mm -hmm. and personally that i had to hear not about me but about what they had been through how they had been trained culturally mm -hmm. and if i didn't listen to them i would not have the spirit of compassion and wisdom yeah to be able to go past what I felt about what they were saying into how do I help this brother right. become that. That's so good, man. Thanks for just sharing that. Uh, I just agree. Every time I sit down with Pastor Dante, I, I admitted to him earlier over lunch, I said, every time I sit down, I'm, I pray. And I'm literally like, Lord, help me hear what yeah. I need to hear today. Yeah. Help me um, have the ears to hear, the mind to understand, and the heart to really receive yeah. what it is that God you want to speak to me in other words what do I need to learn today yeah. as I have a conversation with my brother who will yeah. bring a, 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 you know an approach to the conversation that I I've not lived in his shoes I don't know what it's like to see from that side of the of the table if you will so Lord help me listen not just but you know head and heart so again listening um, yeah, but then again, likewise, Lord, help me not let my own unique personal issues with discrimination from people who look like Dan influence my relationship with Dan when I really need to hear what he has to say because he is a voice of influence and wants to promote healing. And by the way, the fact that you bring these issues back up when they're uncomfortable are healing to people who look like me because we haven't had many prophetic voices like yours influence and become a part of this conversation who really do want to hear 
and listen to our plight. Oh, okay, so if I heard you yes, correctly, sir. authenticity goes a long way. Yes, sir. What a rich conversation. And that conversation does go on for a little longer. We're going to share some more pieces of it in the upcoming Tuesdays as we lean into the presence of God so that we can become more like Jesus in our churches, in our community. I want to thank Pastor Dante Thomas for joining me today. I appreciate you, Pastor Dante. And I want to thank Elevation Church there in Bedford for loaning us your man of God. He's not only helping you grow as he shepherds you, but he's helping us grow. I appreciate him. Love him. Love his family. We're praying for you, Elevation Church, as well. Word has it that you're tuning into these videos and you're being encouraged and you're growing as well. And I want to say thank you for your prayers for me and for Calvary Assembly of God as well. I'd like to take a quick moment to pray. Would you just bow your head, bow your heart for a moment? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the gift of grace and mercy you've given us through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Holy Spirit, we welcome you to fill the church, but more importantly, intimately, to fill the hearts of your people with power to lean into the love of Jesus for others, to see others as you do, to live like Jesus, to speak like Jesus, to listen with a heart like Jesus. Give us the courage to engage in authentic, loving conversation and relationship. Help us understand one another. Help us grow in grace. We give you credit. We give you honor. Everything that you do in us that's good, we give you praise. It all comes from you. So do this in us. Do this in my brothers and sisters. Do this in our churches. Do this then, therefore, in our community and in our nation. In the name and for the glory of our Savior, Jesus, we pray. Amen.